Good morning, Ayrshire, and uh, I'm absolutely delighted to be here today. And just to um, say that I'm no longer principal designate of Ayrshire Colleges, I'm actually principal of the Ayrshire College, and I'm very proud that I've been in post slightly longer than Craig because I've been in post for 23 days. <laughs> so um, that it's been it's been a bit of a busy time, um, but it's absolutely fabulous, and we're very lucky in Ayrshire. Um, because we have a great community. And I'm very proud to have become part of that community over the last five years, because as a girl from the East Coast, you'll know in the East Coast, they say, well, you'll have had your tea. And when I came to the West Coast, people were inviting me for tea. So it was, it was really good. And I've been very welcomed um, in Ayrshire and I've decided to stay here. So being the principal of Ayrshire College is, is a real privilege for me. And today I just want to share with you one of my passions. And following on from a government ministry, you have to kind of make a link, you know, because the government are our paymasters and I always like them to give us more money. So go back, Derek, and say how well Heather did this link and I might get another few million. Um, <laughs> but the, next week, the government are launching a major campaign called Make Young People Your Business. And I challenge you all here today to make young people your business. Because if we don't make young people our business, we are just not going to be successful as an economy and we're not going to have a successful society in the next 30 years. So I want to share with you today some of my engagements with young people, some of my engagements with people in this audience, because the great thing about Ayrshire is that we have great community in Ayrshire. We have fabulous stakeholders. I work with all of the key stakeholders in Ayrshire and they support me every day in my role. And I work closely with the business community in Ayrshire. And the business community give generously, not only of their money, which I'm always happy to have, will I, any time, um, but of their time. You know, and you're going to hear later today from Marie Macklin from the Quinn Group, who comes and works with young people in the college to make a difference. So I want to share with you just some stories this really annoys me. These are headlines that came from newspapers. And when you lift the paper and you read stuff like this, I get really annoyed because I meet young people every day. Ayrshire College has 15,000 students. 70% of those students are of the age between 16 and 24. I don't have that image of young people. The young people I meet Sometimes they can be a wee bit cheeky, they're a wee bit smart, they think they know everything, but generally, well, especially when they see me, they just go, oh, hello, Heather, um, you're having a good day, and that, that's great. And I chat to them about what they are interested in and what they want to do. So these kind of headlines really irritate me, and, and having looked at these headlines for years and years and years, and I've been involved in education for a long time, but I've also uh, worked in the private sector. So I've had a view of young people from a wide spectrum of, of uh, organisations, and this really annoys me. I did think about putting my jeans and my hoodie on today and coming and saying to you, what, what, what do you think when you see that? Do you immediately judge me and the kind of person I am? So these kind of headlines just irritate me and I don't like them. I don't really like journalists very much and um, actually the Kilmarnock Standard printed a great story and, and Marie sent me a great text saying, Heather, great story in the Standard about the, the college and it came across really well and I said, yeah, it only took five years. <laughs> so, you know, we ha you keep working on it and you can change things as Derek said. You've got to believe in what you do. So for me, this is the image I would like to portray of young people. These are some of my young people in one of the college campuses and they're happy young people and they're going about their business in a good way. They're giving back to their community because one of the things that I ask all of my students to do is to undertake community projects because that gives them a huge purpose in life and it lets them meet other folk from their own community that they might never have come across. And it makes a huge difference. So that's the image I have of young people. And I'm not saying every young person is perfect. But sometimes you have to think about the baggage that comes with the young person before you start to judge them and consider what they've had to do to get out of the house in the morning. 
I've got two pictures here, and I said to John earlier, I'm going to put your picture up, John, and he said, oh, I haven't got a picture of you, Heather. I said, that's all right, I don't mind. But five years ago, when I came to Ayrshire first, I did a huge event with staff in the college. And what, um, what I wanted to do was to get staff to think differently, because we're very much focused on a linear route in life, and we think we know how we do things, so we always do things in the same way. Well, I went to work on the Sweet Encounter in Woolies because my teachers told my mum and dad, who were very supportive, that really there was no opportunity for me to do anything because all I did was throw paper aeroplanes at them and could, I, could they please just get me out of school? So, you know, my experiences have influenced the way I've wanted to do things in my life. And when I met John, I was really, really inspired because John spoke to the staff of the college and really moved them in the story he was telling about his experiences with young people. And one of the things that John said that really stuck with me was that all of the stakeholders that are involved in interventions with young people, and Derek mentioned that it's really important to make interventions and to stop things from happening. And John brought home to me that interventions sometimes happen too late because instead of us being at the top of the cliff stopping people from jumping over, we were the ambulance at the bottom picking them up after things had happened. And so that made me think really differently. And it really had a powerful impact on, on my staff team. The other thing that happened um, when I came to Ayrshire was I met Sir Harry Burns. He wasn't a Sir at that time, but he is now. So I met Sir Harry Burns. And he's another very inspirational leader who says, well, we've got to do things differently. We've lost our sense of community. We need to create well-being. You know, we're in a society now where we need to create well-being. It's that bit about, you know, Derek's granny, everybody went into her house. And nowadays, that would be seen as something that was different. So we need to really, really think about how we go about things. And these two people inspired me to think differently and to do things differently. And my own background, I think, has helped me to try to do things differently. So I want to talk to you a wee bit today about a place in the college called The Hive. And it's a place where we have a lot of young people. They're young people who traditionally would not have done very well at school, who perhaps have had a lot of other challenges in their life, and who would never, ever go into a, a, a direct programme in college because they need a wee bit of extra help to get them there. And I'm very privileged this morning that two of the, the young people who um, uh, have been in the Hive have allowed me to share their stories with you, and they won't, don't want me to do it anonymously. They've said I can show you their pictures. And they're very powerful stories because in the Hive, the students are um, working with staff in a different way. And what makes it different is there is no defined syllabus. The students are the co-creators of their own learning. They decide on the projects they're going to do. They decide on the community projects they're going to do. And they have to work together as a team. So they have to take ownership and responsibility. And for some of these young people, they've never had that before. Nobody's trusted them enough to give them ownership and responsibility. But that's what they get. They all have to become volunteers in their community. That's really important. Give something back. That's a really powerful thing. There's a great purpose there. I was giving out awards yesterday to 12 young people who had completed a community project at Aberlour in Prestwick. And those young people had never had anybody say to them before, you did really well. And they had a great purpose. The best part of what they did was that community project <coughs> because they got great feedback. I ask all of the young people, not only in the Hive, but in the whole college, to make a difference to other people, whether that's making a difference by doing something in the college or out with, I ask them all to do that. And I ask all of the students in the college to be ambassadors for the college. I say to them, when you go out of the college, you're me. So if you don't behave in the right way, then actually you're letting me down. And that's a really powerful thing because they want me to be able to trust them. And all of our ambassadors get a badge, an Ayrshire College badge. And they're very proud to wear that. So our students in the Hive, and over the five years I've been in, in the college um, in Kilmarnock, 
The, we've had about 300 students a year go through the hive, so we've had about 1,500 students. Our success rate is 95% go on to positive destinations. That's huge when you hear their stories. Two young people here. On uh, this side of the screen, we've got Lee, and on the other side of the screen, we've got Jodie. If I tell you Lee's story first, Lee was a bit like me. I think he flung paper airplanes at the teachers because at the age of 15, Lee decided to leave school. And um, one of his friends said, well, you like cars, so go and be a motor mechanic. And he came to the college on a winter leavers program to be a motor mechanic. But the staff in that particular area uh, found out very quickly that Lee couldn't read and write. And he had been through the whole school system, but he couldn't read and write. So his bad behaviour in school, where he, he sat in the corner, didn't speak to very many people, he, he, he didn't actually uh, behave badly, he just disengaged. And the teachers just used to send him outside because he disengaged. He came to the college and the staff in the motor vehicle department realised that Lee um, needed some extra help and that he was never going to achieve being a motor mechanic if he couldn't read and write. So they directed him to the hive. They didn't say go away. They said, go to the hive, you'll get some support there, the folk there will help you. Lee came into the hive, worked really, really hard. And I'm really proud to say that two years later, Lee was able to get his very, very first job. And his first job was a part-time uh, worker with uh, Partners for Inclusion in Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock's a great place, by the way. There's great people there. And Lee went to work for Partners for Inclusion to work with disabled children. And he did such a great job that he decided that he would volunteer for them for the rest of the week. So he worked part-time and volunteered part-time. Then he decided, because he could read and write, and because he had gained some qualifications in the hive, that he would come back to college for evening classes. And Lee is now uh, halfway through his HNC and social care in the evening, and being supported by staff in the college and his workplace, and he has just been given a full-time permanent job by Partners for Inclusion. Now, that's a young man that four years ago was just getting into trouble. He was just wasting his life. And Jodie, on the other side, well, Jodie has been with us for just over um, 18 months. Jodie um, was expelled from school at the age of 12, and by the age of 15, she was in a homeless unit. By the age of 17, she was taking drugs and drinking alcohol every day, and she just couldn't see a way out of it. At 18, one of her friends in the Blue Triangle, which is a home, it's homeless accommodation, said to her, I'm going to this place called The Hive, why don't you come with me? And Jodie came, and through the work that happened with Jodie in The Hive, what she was able to do was to change her habits, because we've got a great support network. We work with NHS Ayrshire and Arran, Drugs and Alcohol. Their team help us. We work with the Violence Reduction Unit that John used to head up. We work with a range of stakeholders across Ayrshire to support our young people. And Jodie, um, just before the summer, Jodie, who couldn't speak to anybody because she had no confidence, delivered a lecture at Stirling University for all of the staff who were going to be working with young people in their future careers and uh, all the students who were going to be working with young people. So there were staff there as well. She delivered a lecture to that cohort at Stirling University about how to engage with young people with challenging behaviour. She got a standing ovation. I was really proud of Jodie and Jodie was really proud of herself. So much so that we entered Students from the Hive for the Herald Society Award last year. And I'm really proud to say that they won that award. And we took them all out. We got them all posh clothes because they didn't have posh clothes. And it was a posh do. And we were going to Glasgow at night to get dressed up to go to a hotel. So they all got their clothes and they, they were all ready to go. And we went in the college minibus, which wasn't quite as salubrious. But, <laughs> um, you know, we do try. And we went up in, in the college minibus and we got there and everybody got out the bus. And we're all walking into this posh hotel in Glasgow. And Jodie said to me, Heather, I can't go in. 
And I said, why not, Jodie? I can't go in because I'm not good enough to go in there. Uh, look, at it, look at the lights. I mean, there were chandeliers, for goodness sake. And I said, Jodie, you're going to go in. And when we win this award, because we were going to win it, because there was nobody going to beat us, because that's what Ayrshire College does. Ayrshire College is the best. So when we went in, and when we did win the award, the person that went up to receive that award was Jodie. And she went up in front of 300 people to receive an award and make a speech. And she had never done that before in her life. She was scared, but she was great. And Jodie, that picture was just taken earlier this week because I caught her, because she's back and she's volunteering in the Hive at the moment. And she's hoping to go on to do a programme in September. And she's doing some extra work at the moment with East Ayrshire Council, working with their teams. And she's going to be delivering some additional workshops about working with young people with challenging behaviour. So when I saw her running about last week, I said to her, come on, Jodie, I need your picture. Is this OK? And she said, yeah, because other people need to know it's possible to change your life. So, in working with all these people, to, to conclude my presentation, I have to say, what made the difference? What made the difference for these young people? What makes a difference in Ayrshire College is we have the best staff, and it's a great place to work, and that's made the difference for these young people. When I ask them, and I ask them all, because I speak to them all, um, on a very regular basis. I'm not an invisible principal. In fact, one of my staff said to me the other day, I was in the Kilwinning campus, and a member of staff said to me, I think we would like you to be invisible. Um, <laughs> and I said, well, I'm sorry, you're just going to have to get used to me being visible. Um, you know, so it's quite interesting. But what, what made the difference? This is what the students in the Hive say, and students across the college say, makes a difference to their learning. Staff are enthusiastic, and there are some of them here today, and I'm really pleased to see them here. Uh, the staff believe in them. Nobody has believed in them before. The staff believe that they can do something. The staff work hard, and they'll say, just do it. Just go on and do it. Entrepreneurial Spark, we're the only college in Scotland that work with Entrepreneurial Spark. Willie's here today. And that's their philosophy. Go do it. Our philosophy is just get on and do it. You know, we're very pragmatic in Ayrshire College. We have a lot of fun and we celebrate success at every opportunity. And I celebrate the success of my young people at every opportunity. And that's really important. We never judge. My goodness, if I judged every young person I saw on first impressions, I wouldn't get very far. Because there are, you know, deeper things that you have to find out about people. We never give up. Jodie came initially and left after two weeks and we pursued her because we thought, she deserves a chance. She's a bright, bright young woman. And she just deserves somebody that will make that difference in her life. We take on their ideas and we value their opinions. So we engage with our students in a different way. And that's really important. But the critical success factor from all of the students, particularly in the Hive, is that we care. And that's the unique selling point. When, when people say to me, what is the unique selling point of the Ayrshire College? Or you've got a great aeronautical centre, or you're really working hard in health and social care, or you've got, um, your students are great in the sports area and they win all these medals and competitions. I say, yes, yeah, we, we do really well. Ayrshire College is a great place to be. We've got the best staff and the best students in Scotland, and we've got the best community partners that support us. But what's different is we care. And we care about every single one of our students. And I think as a community, going back to what Derek says, that's really important moving forward. Sir Harry Burns said we need to create well-being. You create well-being by ensuring that people have a purpose and that they know somebody cares. And so I would ask you to make sure that you show the young people in your life that you encounter on a daily basis, that you care. Take an interest, give them positive feedback, a wee bit of encouragement. You don't know the baggage they've had to leave to get to that point in the day. And that's really, really important for me. Let's make sure that we support our young people. Let's make young people our business, Derek. I think that's a great slogan, but let's make young people our business and let's just make a difference. Caring is a critical success factor.
Thank you very much.